Hi, so this is my first video. A background in biology would definitely help, but isn't necessary. So what is anemia? Anemia is a drop in hemoglobin, hematocrit, or red blood cell number. So hemoglobin is a protein found in red blood cells, and it binds oxygen and delivers it to the cells and organs of your body. Hematocrit, so we're going to look at the diagram over here. So if you take a vial of blood and you centrifuge it, the plasma is going to go to the top, and all the cells are going to fall to the bottom. So hematocrit is the volume of blood that is occupied by red blood cells. So let's say all the blood in this vial is A, and the red blood cells over here are B. So hematocrit would be B over A. So it's the volume of blood, A, that's occupied by red blood cells, B. So a normal hematocrit is about 40%. Red blood cell number is the number of red blood cells per certain volume. So it's important to remember that all of these three numbers are concentrations. So hemoglobin is usually seen in grams per liter or grams per deciliter. Hematocrit is a proportion over here, and red blood cell number is per a given volume. So in women, anemia is considered a hemoglobin less than 120 grams per liter. And in men, anemia is considered a hemoglobin of less than 130 grams per liter. So these numbers may vary depending on what source you look at, but they're usually around 120 and 130. So people with anemia, remember hemoglobin binds oxygen and delivers it to the organs and cells of your body. So people with anemia may have trouble getting oxygen to their cells. But normally, your body's able to compensate for this and you're okay. But if someone has very severe anemia, heart problems or lung problems, then they may be in trouble. So symptoms and signs. So one common presenting feature of anemia is weakness and fatigue. Anemia can present with any number of symptoms. Headache, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fainting, and so on. All of these symptoms are non-specific though. So you can't make the, make the diagnosis of anemia based on symptoms alone. So some of the signs of anemia include pallor. So your skin seems very pale. This is seen particularly in the nail beds, in the creases of your palms, and your conjunctiva. So if you lower your lower eyelid, the pink part you see, that's your conjunctiva. Hypotension, which is a low blood pressure, so that could be seen with anemia, particularly in, with someone who is bleeding. Tachycardia is an increase in heart rate, so that's one of the ways that your body will compensate for anemia. It'll increase your heart rate. Tachycardia can also be a response to decreased blood pressure. So approach. So the causes of anemia can be divided into four main classes. So number one is pseudoanemia. So this is a false anemia. So remember how I said all of these numbers are concentrations? So if you increase the volume, all of these numbers are going to drop, and it's going to look like you have anemia. So examples of pseudoanemia are someone who is receiving lots of intravenous fluids, or pregnancy, where your volume will increase, increase more than your blood cell mass, so it's going to look like you have anemia. Um, so the next three here are true causes of anemia, so blood loss, hemolysis, which is destruction of red blood cells, and decreased red blood cell production. So these three can be separated using what we call the reticulocyte count. So reticulocytes are immature red blood cells. So we're going to look at this diagram now. Reticulocytes are produced in the bone marrow, and they're released into the circulation where they're going to mature into red blood cells. So normally, a red blood cell survives 110 to 120 days before it's destroyed. So your bone marrow is going to produce reticulocytes to replace these red blood cells that are dying. So normally, we have a reticulocyte count of 1%. So that means if you, take, if you look at all of your red blood cells, approximately 1% will be reticulocytes. Again, this number varies depending on the source that you look at. Some books will have 2%. So reticulocyte count of less than 1% means that your bone marrow is not producing enough reticulocytes to replace the red blood cells that you're losing. So this means that you have decreased red blood cell production. If your reticulocyte count is greater than 1%, it means you're losing red blood cells at a faster rate than you should be. So your bone marrow is producing more reticulocytes to replace the red blood cells that you're losing. So that's, the, that's what's seen in blood loss and hemolysis. For the rest of the video, I'm only going to focus on decreased RBC production. So we can separate the causes of decreased RBC production based on MCV, 
So MCV is mean per pustular volume, so that's the volume of the red blood cell. So a normal volume is 80 to 100, so we call this normocytic. A decreased volume is less than 80, we call that microcytic, and an increased volume is greater than 100, and we call that macrocytic. So I'm going to start over here with the microcytic anemias. So the microcytic anemias include iron deficiency anemia, anemia of chronic disease, thalassemia, and sideroblastic anemia. So sideroblastic anemia is quite rare. So it's a defect that causes iron to accumulate in the mitochondria, and it can be either inherited or acquired. So acquired causes of sideroblastic anemia include lead intoxication and some medications, um, such as isoniazide, which is used to treat tuberculosis. So everything that's started, I'm going to come back to and talk about later. So the normal cytic anemias include anemia of chronic disease, once again, renal failure, so people who have problems with their kidneys, hypothyroidism, which is a decrease in thyroid hormone, aplastic anemia. So aplastic anemia is a failure of the bone marrow. So this is seen in people who have received radiation or chemotherapy, their bone marrow just isn't working. So they'll often have decreased in all three cell counts, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets and the reticulocyte count is often zero. Multiple myeloma is a cancer of the plasma cells, and anemia is often seen with multiple myeloma. Myeloptosis is infiltration of the bone marrow. So things like tumors can, infil can infiltrate the bone marrow, and the bone marrow doesn't work properly and won't produce cells. So again, you may see a pancytopenia, which is a decrease in red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. So the macrocytic anemias include vitamin B12 deficiency, folate deficiency. So these two can be grouped into the category of megaloblastic anemias. So megaloblastic anemias mean that means there's a problem with DNA synthesis. Alcohol, liver disease, hypothyroidism, sideroblastic anemia, once again, and myelodysplastic syndrome. So myelodysplastic syndrome is, means there's a problem in the maturation of your cells. So you're, the cells aren't maturing properly and you're not producing red blood cells. And of course, there's plenty of medications that can cause anemia and they can fall into any one of these three categories. So diagnosis. So to diagnose anemia, usually we order a CBC, which is a complete blood count and a smear. So a smear is just looking at the red blood cells under a microscope to see what they look like. A complete blood count includes a bunch of tests. So it'll include your hemoglobin, your red blood cell number, your, it'll show you your white blood cells, your platelets, it'll show you your MCV. So it'll give you most of the things you need. Uh, one of the tests that I want to talk about that's part of the CBC is what we call the RDW, which is the red cell distribution width. So this looks at the size of your red blood cells. And they look at the range of sizes. So here's an example. So if all your cells are the same size, you don't have a range, a really a range in the size of your red blood cells. So your REDW is going to be small. Now, if you have very tiny cells and very big red blood cells, then you have a large range in, your, uh, in the size of your red blood cell. So then you're going to have a very large RDW. And I want to talk about this later because it helps to distinguish some types of anemia. Um, so after you order these, then you order other tests based on what you need. So you can get iron studies, um, you can look at uh, creatinine, which is a marker of kidney disease, you can look at your thyroid hormone, you can look at your vitamin B12 level, your folate level, you can look at liver function tests, and so on.